Hi guys, welcome back to another video tutorial. In this one, we're going to look into the form state. Form state can be rather complicated. And this is one of the reasons why React Top Form shines. Because in not just taking care of the performance, but also calculating all the form state happening within your form and making your life a little bit easier. So before I dive into a practical example, let me explain all the form state that we're actually capturing. Okay, so I'm going to go through one by one. First, is dirty is going to be a Boolean value, which indicates whether your form is being changed from your default value. Dirty fields is an object which indicates every individual input that's been changed and mark them as Boolean when they changed. Touched fields means an input gets focused and then blurred by the user. Is submitted, it means a form gets submitted. On the other hand, is submitted successful will only turn into true if, if the form gets submitted without any errors. Is submitting, it means some kind of asynchronous action is happening with your on submit callback. So it will start with false and turn into true once that function gets resolved. Submitted counts means how many times the user actually press the submit button. It's valid is a way to indicating whether your entire form is valid against all the validation rule that you associated with. It's validating is indicate when an individual inputs is try to validating uh, at the asynchronous level. And the last one, arrows, indicates how many mistakes the user actually made on the form. So you can report back to the user. Cool. Now I'm actually going through all the forms today. Let's put them into practical use. First, before you actually can be able to leverage all the forms today, you have to pull that out from the user form. Now, one thing is very important about form state is form state have a thin layer of proxy to optimize the re-render and the computation behind. So if you just reading the entire form state, it doesn't send any kind of signal to react to form to deconstruct the object. We know which form state you're subscribing to. So let's start with the simplest, which is the arrows object. So now if I press the submit button, I would be expecting two errors appear because I have two validation associated with both inputs. Cool, that works. Really nice and easy way to subscribe to the arrow objects. Then you can print something, the message to the UI, any sort of customized UI. Very easy to integrate with. Cool. Next one let's go into is dirty. Is dirty is very important um, to be aware of for React Talk form to calculate in that is dirty form state. We need to providing a default value for your entire form because we need a single source of truth to do that deep equal so we can know whether the form is valid or not. So in this case, let's give a default value for the first name and last name with empty string. So in this case, we will start with is, default, is dirty as false. And then whatever we make and change, React Talk Form can grab all the value and do a deep equal against your default value. So in this case, here we go. And if we delete that again, that go back to the default. Cool. So the next one, let's cover dirty fields. And dirty field is more like individual level. So if we change that, we change that. It will get reported both inputs is dirtied. So one of the things that people would make mistake is they didn't provide a default value and it's dirty is not really changing. However, the dirty fields get updated. So people will be thinking, oh, why this is misaligned? In most of the case, this is due to default value is not being provided. So it's very important to always providing a default value for your form if you actually subscribing to is dirty form state. Cool. Now, 
let's go into the next one. And like I mentioned before, this one, uh, I got a typo. This one indicates an input gets folks and then blurred. So we can just do this like that. See, we now the touch field gets reported whether those two inputs actually being focused. Cool. The next one let's get covered with is submit is submitted. Let's do is submitted. Is submitted is kind of doesn't really care whether the inputs is actually valid or not. So in this case, I have two validation associated and I still have empty fill. So when I press the submit, it's submitted still return true because it is being submitted. So if you want to know whether the form gets submitted successfully, then you would want to use is submitted successfully. So in this case, now if I submit the button now, it submits successfully will return false. So if I give it a value now and submit, that will return true. Cool. And the next one is going to be submit account. Uh, as the name described, it just capturing how many times the forms get submitted. Okay, next let's look into is valid form state. Now, is valid form state really is running all the validation associated with every inputs on your form. So the other things really important to notice that is valid only works on mode on change. Why? Because when you're subscribing to the entire form, is valid or not, really you're asking React Talk form to check every keystroke against your validation, against your validation schema, whether the form is valid or not. So if you're doing, for example, on submit, then the validation really happens after the user press the submit button. So it's too late. So this really need to happen on every keystroke. Cool. Now let's test this in now. So in this case, it's valid start with false. And if I provide in the first input with some value, the form is still invalid because the second input hasn't been validated. So now until I actually providing something for the second input, then it's valid become true. Cool. The next thing let's cover is submitting. Actually, this is something I forgot when I was talking about submitted. Uh, so is submitting is useful when you actually want to do something asynchronous on your own submit. So say for example, we want to sleep for five seconds, five, actually three seconds, right? And the moment we're submitting the form, right, that this should indicate us to true, right? It started with false. So the moment we actually press that, it's submitting is going to be true because it's indicating something's happening and then it reverted back to be false because it's submit gets resolved and everything gets finished. Okay, next, let's look into is validating form state. And is validating form state, it's useful when you actually want to know individual inputs is actually gets validating. So let's subscribing to is validating and then we're turning this into validated function so we can run something asynchronous. And we want to bring asynchronous function and we want that to be sleep for one second before we return true. Cool. Now let's refresh that and is validating was started with false and if I press the button it will become true and then wait for one second and then once that gets resolved it revert back to the false. Now the last thing I want to cover in here is what if you want to be aware of form state change at the user fact. So you can actually do that at the user fact and putting down form states as the dependency array. That way we can actually getting notified when form state gets changed. Uh, here we go. So let's put that use effect. And if we changing something and perverting that back, notice that use effect gets fired in the console log. 
cool. I think in this video, I pretty much cover everything now inside of form state. There are a few things that you need to be mindful. For example, we do have a thin layer of proxy that knowing which forms that you're subscribing to and kind of optimize for the re-render and the computation behind. So making sure you're deconstructing your form state inside. And the other thing such as it's dirty, we really need you to providing the default value so we can do a deep equal against your uh, default value. And the last thing probably is is valid that it's very important for you to actually changing the mode to from default to on chain so we can validating things on every keystroke. Cool, I'm gonna wrap this up. I hope you're finding this tutorial useful and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, bye.